deeper meaning. Amen. Because oftentimes we we glance, you know, we, we really glance over it, we gloss over it, we quick, quickly read, well, I'm going to read my, you know, read my chapter today, but I got to read it and I got to get back to, you know, whatever else I was doing. But if you're reading really and you're absorbing, reading for comprehension, as your teacher might have said to you at some point, right, reading for comprehension, reading to absorb the information, I don't ever walk away from reading the scriptures without learning something new. Uh, ex experiencing something on a deeper level each time. And Daniel is beginning to tell us here, and the angel, in fact, was telling him, shut up those words for a time. But there would be a time at the end when many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. The Amplified says, conceal these words and seal up the scroll until the end of time. Many will go back and forth and search anxiously through the scroll and knowledge of the purpose of God as revealed by his prophets will greatly increase. Again, the Amplified helps us to see the definitions of the Greek and Hebrew words and we can see clearly we're not talking about learning a new skill. We're not talking about you know, a new, a new language. We're talking about increasing our knowledge in the purposes of God revealed by the prophets. How is this happening? Because as more people read the word, the Holy Spirit reveals. And if you are, uh, you know, exposed to all the many uh, avenues, I mean, YouTube is, you know, flush with biblical information. The Internet is flush with biblical information. Uh, there's, you know, the Bible is the most printed and reprinted text ever in history. There are more ways right now to access uh, not just one translation, but there are, there are applications now that allow you to have 10, 20, 30 versions of the Bible. Amen? And we now have uh, the release of even other uh, what I call extra biblical texts, uh, the book of Enoch, uh, the, the um, Baruch, and so many others. People are now uh, reading more of the Apocrypha. And I'm talking about mainstream or, you know, regular uh, people of Christ, not just in the Catholic or Orthodox, Orthodox churches. Uh, we, all of us, are becoming more and more exposed Amen to the things of God and his prophecies are being revealed. And as we have been examining them together, we've been learning and our eyes have been opening. You know, often we pray, Lord, remove the scales from our eyes, open our ears so that we may hear. Right. So we know that not only not, we see clearly that the word of God is being uh, carried out right here in our very midst. That there is indeed an increase of knowledge of the things of God. A great increase, in fact, not just a you know cursory increase. I mean, this is everywhere is flooded with the word of the Lord. Uh, and, and, it, and I think the Bible has now been translated in every language. Uh, so uh, remembering, too, what the prophecy said, uh, not this particular one, but the one that said that... Um, uh, Every ear, every person shall hear the word of God or be exposed or have access to. You know, no one can claim ignorance. No one can claim ignorance. I mean, every billboard, pamphlets, people are even still giving out, you know, leaflets and, and uh, flyers and those kinds of things. So there's just no, there's an abundance of the information. There is no excuse for having, uh, for not knowing. And in fact, as I said before, I believe that this past year with COVID, things have been shut down. We were put into our homes, like just like Passover, and said to do what when we were in our homes, just like the Israelites. Pray, watch, pray, and worship. And so if you've been doing that, then clearly this information has been even revealed to you. Amen. So we go on. And I want to also point out the interesting thing here. 
Because the scripture says people will go back and forth and search anxiously through the scroll. Now, many times people hear the word anxious and they they have a negative connotation. But one can be anxious and it not be totally negative. You can be anxious and excited, right, about receiving a package that you may have ordered. Or you can be anxious uh, about company coming to visit, right? Those things are not inherently negative, right? But it, uh, here I think we have a dual, sort of a dual meaning, right? There are clearly those of us who are looking forward to the time of the end, looking forward to the promise that God has given us, that we will be uh, raptured or caught up to meet him in the air, right? There, that is that blessed hope that we all have. So in some sense, there is a, a bit of stirring, right, and anxiousness about that. Then those of us who are more sensitive to the environment or uh, some people can feel vibrations in the earth. Some people have an ability to hear sounds that other people don't hear, perhaps. Uh, even like when you have watched animals, if you watch them during a storm or when a storm is impending, animals tend to become anxious, right? They don't necessarily, uh, or they you know, become um, restless, maybe, would perhaps be a better, uh, another word to use. But as we see all of these birth pangs that Jesus talked about, we see all of the events occurring, rumors of wars, earthquakes, volcanoes, or, you know, and he said, right, that mountains would be moved, islands would be moved out of their place. Well, how does that happen? That happens with earthquakes and volcanoes, amen? And uh, so we're beginning, you know, we see these things, right? We hear about the rumors of wars. We see the famines. We see the plagues. We see all of the uh, prices going up and things, you know, being experienced in our world. So we have no other uh, reaction, really, but to, but to sense it and become stirred in our spirit, not necessarily anxious in a negative connotation. However, when we look here in the Amplified, it says anxiously searching through the scroll. Now, I don't know about any of you, but I could say that I have been anxiously. That means I've been fervently, I've been excited about searching through the scroll, the entire scroll, the Holy Bible. Right? And in particular, we have, uh, we started out last year with some of the very beginnings of understanding who God is, and we walked all the way through uh, how to be more like him and his characteristics and all of that, and, we, and we've come full circle to the book of Revelation and looking and examining those things of the end time, and uh, I am excited, not in a morbid way, but I'm excited that the Lord is, that we can see the Lord's hand working. We are living in a really, truly exciting time right now when we are beginning to see more and more. If you, if imagine you are privileged to see and experience events that these prophets only, only knew about in their visions. How blessed we are. You are here now experiencing some of the things that, again, the prophets, the, the apostles only knew in part, right? Every generation knows in part, and the picture becomes fuller and fuller as we approach the end of time. So we can be totally excited, anxious, stirred up in our spirit about the, those things that we're seeing, not in fear, not in fear, but just as if you were in the middle of a, you know, preparing a dinner, you're in the kitchen, or maybe there's a, you're doing something with a piece of machinery, and all of a sudden you, you, you get caught in your spirit, oh, I must go to the manual. I, I need to get my cookbook. I need to go look at the directions. Right? So it's kind of like that right now. We, we're stirred up. Things are being stirred up in our spirit. We're anxious. We're excited because of what we're seeing and experiencing. So it causes us to do what? Go to the manual. As many times I've referred to the Bible, 
B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen? So if we, uh, we can't say that we don't have a manual. Praise be to God, he provided for us throughout all the centuries, thousands and thousands of years. Everything else gets destroyed, but God's word has stood and remained. Amen. So, yes, we can be excited to go through these scrolls. We can be compelled to read all of the information that we have available to us, that we can search. And remember that we always want to have more than one witness, more than one scripture, more than, you know, more than one verse. And just as I would encourage you to look at more than one source, more than one uh, website, more than one YouTube channel, more than one you know, translation, because these things begin to open your understanding even more. Uh, but then, as I've said many times, you know, let's not venture too far from the original text. Right. And the original text as we, uh, as we have it and understand it. So yes, anxious. And then there is that flip side. There are certainly those people who, who know, they know in their spirit, in their heart of hearts, in, in, in their very gut, that something different is happening in the world. And where else can they turn? but the word of God. Where else can they turn but the word of God? No other resource, no other source but the almighty God could provide the answers that people need today in all of the many complexities of life that we have now. He is our only source and he's left us this history to try to learn and understand by the previous examples and his prophecies, right? So clearly, those people who are anxious in the negative sense, who are worried, concerned, fretting, those people are seeking also because they're seeking answers, which even further uh, uh, compels us to share our testimony with anyone Anywhere, at any time, who will listen. Because people are searching. People are searching. Unfortunately, they sometimes come to the Bible as their last source. But amen, they do come. And they come through us. We are remembering the word says that we are let, letting our lives be a written epistle. Letting our lives be a letter. Letting our lives be an example. Letting our lives uh, share the testimony of what God has done with us. How where we were once so low and depraved and lost. That how God has enriched our lives. We must share the story because people are searching. People are fearful. People are fretting. People are worried. People are scared, those particularly who are not in the body of Christ. Amen. And so we go on, and Daniel says in verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And who is he talking about? Listen, and notice he said two. Right? Two. So in verse 16, he says, And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, so he's swearing by who? The Almighty God that liveth forever. That it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. Now we're recalling time, time, and half a times is a year, a year, and another year and a half. So time, time, and half a times. What does that equate to? 1260 days, 42 months. 
three and a half years. 